Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to content creator and dancer SJ Blow. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. A lot of your um, follow, because you, you, you produce a lot of amazing content. A lot of people also know you as SJ Blow, but your name is Sarah Jade Blow, right? We want to set the yes. record straight. <laughs> yes, a lot of people don't even know that that's my full name. Absolutely. It's so interesting, too, because it, I, for me, like, Petey Beats is not my real name. I mean, it would be pretty, like, it would be a pretty cool name, maybe, if it was. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely not my real name. Was the first love dancing? Was the first love storytelling? Like, what was the first love for you, specifically, on your kind of path of doing what you're doing now? My first love will always be dancing. Yeah. It has always been. Dancing has been in my life from... Yeah ever since I was seven years old to now I've been doing it for 15 years now so yeah. it's it's my life and it, yes it's been my first love I feel like sometimes it gets it's kind of like a misconception sometimes that dancing because I always talk to like actors and musicians and everything and storytelling right dancing yes. is like the perfect example of storytelling right you're literally telling oh, yes. a story with the dance moves and everything <laughs> yes dancers are actors that's what I always say <laughs> yeah. Because you can make any story while you dance. And while you dance, you have to act too with the facial expressions, which is why I do a lot of facial expressions and people get mad online, but they don't know <laughs> that like that's facial expressions is you just, when you dance, you just do what you feel it just comes naturally so i can't control it. <laughs> it it's pretty interesting too because i feel like you know you have a lot like for me like my first love was always you know uh film and sports i love them equally and everything then music kind of gets in there it's pretty cool for you that like dancing was kind of the first love and you consistently kind of stayed with it a little bit and everything when did it yeah. start kind of like when did the content creation thing really start to get like busy for you would you say though so i was on tour uh on a dancing tour because i had done a tv show and we got all the way to the finals and my crew and i we went to do the tour so it was strictly all dancing for two months and then the tour stopped because of COVID. And I was like, I need to do something to still be dancing and have fun with it and yep. keep up with the dancing. And TikTok was just starting to be a new thing. And everyone was telling me to get on it. My friends, my family, they were like, you should just do it just for fun and see how it goes. And I started posting on it thinking nothing of it. I was not even a social media person at all. I was the person that was so bad at answering texts and calls because <laughs> yeah. I was just that not on social a, media. That happens a lot too. Like that's not the first time I've talked with someone. That's <laughs> yes, I was never on my phone. Never, never, ever. And then I started TikTok and I started posting dancing content. And then people started loving it and following and I was like, wow, like, this is crazy. When I hit 2000 followers on TikTok, I was mind blown because for a long time on Instagram, I only had like a thousand followers. Even if I didn't post much, I had a thousand and I was like, oh, that, that's it. Like, I'm always going to stay there. I didn't really care about the following. And then when I hit 2000 on TikTok, I was like, wow, maybe I should continue. So I started posting every day, sometimes two, three times a day, and people loved it. And I loved making the content. So I was like, okay, let's go. I never thought that it could be work. It could be my job, that I can do this as, as a living. I was just doing it for and fun. Don't get, don't get me wrong. There, you're going to have those conversations with your family and friends sometimes where it's not the focus, but maybe it will come up, right? Like, it would be cool if I could do this as my job you know what i mean but it's definitely kind of not the focus when you're making the content you're just doing it 
and kind of seeing what works, which I find is interesting. And you, know, yeah. you, you mentioned, you know, you were excited, but you got 2,000 TikTok followers. I mean, can you remind me how many TikTok followers you have right now? <laughs> I think 14. You have 14, point million follow- you have 14 million followers or like 0.1, which is... I don't. Even I, I still, I still can't wrap my head around that. I know, I can't. I don't think anyone can. <laughs> no, and it's it's very humbling and very scary at the same time. But I'm just so thankful and grateful that people really want to watch me like that. Like do you 14 feel like there's a response? Of- watch me. Do you feel like there's a responsibility naturally that comes with it because you're reaching so many people around the world? Like, does that, do you think about that as well? I don't see it as responsibility. I just see it like as a big family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But no, yeah. but I'm just saying more about the fact that like you have this platform to, because a lot of the content that you post is very positive. It's very more, even if when it's just kind of like a photo, like when it's just you dancing and everything, it's very positive and motivational. Because I feel like a lot of the, I feel like people like the motivation side of the dancing TikTok videos. I feel like that's something we don't talk about a lot, right? I feel like there was kind of this like happy start your week with some fun dance video kind of feel to TikTok. You know what I mean? Especially yes. during the pandemic, we needed some good stuff to watch. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it was, it was like full dancing. Now, now TikTok is everything. Yep. I follow yep. doctors on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I follow cooks. Yep. Uh, I, I, I obviously follow dancers, but artists are on the app now. It, oh, it's, yeah. People the really, there, there's like a lot of like foodies on TikTok and there's also like a lot of people that love candy and they, they dry freeze candy and it's all over the place. And there's that. Did you do the fruit roll up challenge yet? No, but I <laughs> want to try it. I really, I really do want to try it because I usually always jump on the food trends. Yes. I'm also known as the pickle girl. I love pickles. Yes obsessed with pickles I, I since day one my mom i'm i'm for sure a thousand percent sure my mom when she was pregnant of me fun fact the only thing that she can keep down during the pregnancy was jars of pickles. pickles she would drink the juice and everything i'm convinced that that's why i love pickles that much yeah you had you had a t-shirt right i saw the one yes <laughs> <laughs> yes, I actually own three more like that, but all different pickle shirts oh that I God. still have to film. It. <laughs> do you like the? Do you have you ever have you had a chance to go to one of these carnivals or fairs and have the deep fried pickles? I've already had deep fried pickles in Montreal, but yeah. I've never been to a like you're saying a fair just dedicated to pickles. Mm-hmm. That would my favorite yeah. restaurant of all time is Ruben's Deli on St. Catherine Street in Montreal. That's my favorite place to go. Really? I've never been. It's it's made smoked meat. It's a smoked meat place. Wait, wait, right? wait. What did you say? Ruben's Sorry. Ruben's Deli on St. Catherine. Oh, yes, Where I've been go? there. Yes. But like the location for that is crazy because you literally like you turn on St. Catherine and it's like one of the yes. first restaurants you see. So I always feel like when you yes. have a lot of people that are coming in to check out Montreal for the first time, there's a chance like if they're on St. Catherine that they're going to go they're there because it's smoked meat and everyone talks about Montreal's known for its smoked meat. And it's like yes. one of the first places. <laughs> yeah, it, it's I, I, I really like smoked meat. Yeah. I smoked meat actually. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 it's, it's delicious, and uh, I mean, put, like puts in. I mean, there's like I feel like it's interesting because I like I don't live in Montreal anymore, but like it was. I just like the La Belle Pro, like that was my go to for puts in. You know what I mean? And like, don't even get me started yeah. on. <laughs> I feel like that might be my first love, actually. <laughs> yeah, and then like I, I'm sure you've been to La Banquise before. La Banquise is my favorite. And yeah. along with my friend also uh, is a dancer and he owns a restaurant called La Belle Tonki. And that has, they have the best poutine there. It has kimchi in the poutine. Oh my God, you're, getting, it, you're making me hungry. We gotta, we're going to talk about I'm that. so hungry too. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Um, so 
I feel like there might be a couple of answers to this question, right? You kind of talked about your kind of path of kind of putting content on your social medias. Then the kind of followers just grew and it became this machine of like 14 million TikTok followers all across the world. What would you say was the content or the moment where you were like, wow, these are the things that people really like. Like these are the type of dancing clips or these are the things that are really kind of doing well. Like what was the turning point where you're like, wow, like this is big. Like were there a certain type of content that was really kind of like getting a lot more traction and you were like, I need to make more of this specifically. I feel I don't do it as much, but I feel that people love my robot videos those always go crazy. I don't know why I don't do them as much. Maybe because I know that I wasn't necessarily trained to the T in uh, animation is what we call it yep. for robot dancing. So I feel less comfortable uh, going ahead and doing a lot of robot just yep. because I was technically trained in it. And as a dancer, I like to dance the style that I've been trained in. Like, I know I can back it up with all the culture and the facts and, and just everything about hip hop and dance hall and crump and stuff like that. But I wasn't really trained in animation. But that's what people love the most. Do you? And I, yeah, and it's interesting too, because I'm sure, you know, like, even for Popternative, like for our Instagram and everything, like we like we have a team, you know what I mean? Like it's it's me, but I have support, you know what I mean? And there are yeah. strategies and talks about like what you're going to post and everything and all that, you know what I mean? Is there yeah. a lot of those talks too where like I, I like you're going to kind of like you have this opportunity of, okay, like now we're at the time where – my followers want certain content consistently. So we're going to give that content, but you also have this opportunity of like trying things out, like throwing something on the wall and see what sticks. But like, there's a lot of strategy now you would say, right. With a lot of that. There is a lot of strategy. I tend to not go with strategy. I tend to just post with what I feel like posting. Mm -hmm. And these days I have gotten back to my roots to, post things that I just, I love myself. And if it resonates with people, it resonates. Yep. And I feel like that's more authentic content for me. I love to just be authentic. I'm not going to post a video just because I want it to get views or because I know that it's, it might be what people want. I always try to keep it super authentic for myself at the same time, I know that people will like it anyways. It's but that balance. Me, it's not much strategy. But it's that balance. Yeah. But that is a strategy, though. Like, it is. And it's a great one. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. But I'm not... I, I won't make content just to, like... You're please. very strategic. And very quickly, last question before we wrap up. Because I find, you know... What would you say is your favorite thing? I'm going to ask you, like, a part A, part B question. Part A okay. is... What's your favorite thing about being a dancer? And what is your okay. favorite thing about being a content creator? Because I feel like they might be two different answers. Okay. Favorite thing about being a dancer. Ever since I was seven years old, I've always, I've gotten better, but I've always had trouble expressing myself with my words. Mm -hmm. So as a dancer, dancing is how I express myself how I express my emotions and how I feel. And dance for me has been therapy. So it has always been an outlet for me whenever I feel sad or mad or angry, I'll just dance and it'll help me out automatically. And I feel that dancers see the world in a different way. I don't know how to say it, but if you're a dancer, to me, you're automatically cool. Yeah. You're automatically a cool person. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And then <laughs> I uh, love that. It's so great. Thing, right? <laughs> favorite thing to like favorite thing as a content creator. Hmm. Being able to touch many people, yep. change a person's day, being able to meet new friends through 
social media. I've got, I've gained so many friends just through social media. Yep. And hmm, I think that that pretty much revolves everything. So for people take notes, because if you're a dancer, you are a cool person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That was like the best. Yes. Absolutely. No, for sure. That's great. And SJ, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you so much. This was so great chatting with you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so you. much for having me. I had a great time. You're such a fun energy and I, I love it. Absolutely. Um, very quickly, um, it's, I mean, Instagram and TikTok are kind of the two places, right, for people to go, right? And it's just SJ Blow, correct? Yes. Awesome. Is that, is that like, uh, is there anything we should be looking out for specifically or just kind of like what we talked about? Just content, maybe you'll throw in some more robot, <laughs> robot dances now after this? Maybe I'll throw in some more robot dances. <laughs> But I'm also wanting to start a podcast on YouTube. And I know a lot of people have been doing podcasts, but I feel like that's something that would really help me with my my speaking. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would get more comfortable with it. And every single day, I have these deep thoughts and deep conversations with my roommate. And I feel like one day we were just walking and I was like, wait, why don't we just do a podcast? And I feel like a lot of people would want to hear what we have to say. So yeah. maybe a podcast on YouTube. They'll most have to follow likely. and they'll have to follow and see what what's what's uh they'll have to follow and see if, if that happens. Yes. That'd be awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turn of youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is SJ Blow and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.